Welcome back to the channel. Earlier this year, Fentos and Dirac released excellent videos demonstrating the use of roof bunkers using terrain. Since the discovery, I've been very busy with other projects to fully explore this untapped market. That was until I thought up of a hyper-efficient double bunker design. Introducing the Padlock, a budget-friendly base meant for solos or duo builders. Its headline feature is an easy to set up, no blueprint required, double bunker design. Despite the small size, you can fit a staggering amount of deployables and storage. While the starter is unconventional, it can be progressed to an inexpensive vault for your loot. If the terrain allows it, you can even incorporate a basic shooting floor for a stone node's worth of upkeep a day. Speaking of which, the other obvious takeaway feature is the extremely cheap build costs and upkeep, which keeps raiders 23 rockets away from your most precious loot. If you want to take a look at the base in person, you can check it out on Builder Sanctuary by using the share code PADLOCK. With that out of the way, let's take a tour of the base. We enter the base through our main airlock, which is protected by a shotgun drop. To the right, we find one of our loot rooms, which like most of the base, maximizes every bit of space efficiently. The other loot room has even more storage and even a tier 3 workbench. Above the 1x1 is a dedicated bedroom. Behind, you'll find even more storage and our repair bench. Inside our 1x1 vault is our most protected loot and our main TC. When you log offline or are away from the base for a while, seal up the basic stability bunker. I like to keep a building plan and hammer with ceiling mats in this campfire. This is the other bunker to seal when you go offline. Before we jump into the build, I want to go over how to pick your base location for the terrain bunker since it's a critical component of the design. I also would like to preface this by reminding you to familiarize yourself with this mechanic on a build server prior to building on wipe day. To get started, what you're looking for is terrain that has a respectable grade, preferably with a flatter plateau next to it. This can just be flat terrain, or my favorite choice which is these flat rock prefabs that are abundant all over the map. Unlike Fentos's and Drax's examples, this footprint requires a higher terrain incline to incorporate the second stability bunker. While you can definitely do this build on any respectable grade with a flat bit of land next to it, for demonstrative purposes, I'll be building it on top of one of these rock prefabs. Being as straight as possible, start by angling the triangle edge next to the terrain. Then, move the triangle into the ground, just enough to make sure the edge and the tips of the corners are sufficiently under the terrain. Then, build your footprint off of that. Of course, double check to make sure it fits the space. And that's it. So, you've practiced the mechanic, the footprint, and you've just spawned on the beach. If you want to live out of the base's star unit, I recommend making your way towards outposts, gathering supplies, and as much stone as you can find along the way. On your way there, make mental notes of potential spots that you could fit the footprint on. The reason we're going towards outposts is to trade stone for wood. Unfortunately, thanks to the unorthodox design of the base, we need to build a good majority to enclose ourselves. While you could theoretically farm enough stone for the starter, it's much riskier, especially off of spawn. So, because of that, when you get to outposts, I recommend trading 3 to 4k stone for a bunch of wood, and with your other materials, head towards your build site. Following the demonstration I showed earlier, slap down the footprint, making sure all the foundations are placed correctly. Upgrade these two foundations to stone to prevent players from calling under them into your base. Then seal the starter. While the base is obviously very weak to eco rating right now, you shouldn't have much to lose anyways if they do. Furnish the interior as you see fit. 
Of course, your next priority should be to gather up enough stone to upgrade the starter and metal to put sheet metal doors on the airlock. Next, we'll set up the terrain bunker to increase offline raid protection. To use it, place a triangle roof on the foundation and upgrade it to stone. The roof conditionals will activate to seal the doorway. Breaking the twig foundation below it makes the roof collapse and unblocks the entrance. Next, we'll upgrade the core one by one and establish the second stability bunker. Seal the stability bunker when you log offline. When you log online and need to access your most valuable loot, spawn on the bag in the bunker and break the twig. If you want even more space for deployables and save a tiny bit of upkeep, you can skip sealing these triangles. Once you get a tier 2, you can opt to put two garage doors to section off the loot rooms and increase the cost of a roam raid through doors. Once you get the resources for it, upgrade the base to its final build grade. As always, start with the core and work your way out. As a reminder, you can skip sealing these triangles if you want more room for deployables. To add triangle shelves to the side loot rooms, build a temporary half height shelf on the outside of the base. To maximize space, place a mixing table up against the back wall and put a half height triangle wood shelf pointing into it. If you get your hands on a tier 3, you can put it in the other loot room. Then, put your boxes. On these shelves, you can put a repair bench, large box, and a bunch of small boxes. Above the 1x1, put a locker, small box, and a bed. Inside the vault, put a solid shelf, and then squeeze two large boxes, four barbecues, and four small boxes. It's best to start with the top shelf, then the bottom. With a tier 3, you can further discourage a roam raid through doors by opting to research and craft two armored single doors on your main airlock. If the terrain allows it, you have the option to easily add a high visibility airlock and shooting floor with a marginal increase to upkeep. Start by adding three raised foundations in front of the terrain bunker triangle. Close it off with windows and door frames. Keep a permanent ladder against this wall.
Bring the half height sections up to the current level. Two depot boxes can go here. Put window frames around the perimeter. You can opt for a second airlocked entrance. Before we close off this video, I want you to consider a couple things. Depending on the server, the base's starter might be risky to set up because of its unorthodox design. If this makes you uncomfortable, there's no shame in starting out with some 1x2 throwaway starter and then moving into the padlock once you have the resources and have been able to explore the local area thoroughly to find the best possible build spot for it. The other elephant in the room is the base is very vulnerable to door raiding while you're online and the bunkers are open. For this reason, I encourage you to be thoughtful about when you have them open, especially the core stability bunker. Of course, even if the bunker is sealed, the exposed HQM foundations can be soft-sided to bypass it without the use of explosives. While it's unlikely, it most certainly is not out of the question for some more psychopathic groups. While the base is train dependent, in my opinion it's not as big of a deal considering the map is covered with suitable locations to fit the footprint. Once you get a feel for it, you'll be quite surprised with how many places you can actually put it down and it won't feel as limiting as it appears. But with that being said, that concludes today's video. Despite the unorthodox design, I hope that you can see the value in the relatively simple double bunker footprint that features no blueprints for a 23 rocket vault. Thanks to the super cheap upkeep, you can always use this as your core and build a proper base on top of it. Whatever you decide, I hope you enjoyed the video. Consider subscribing for future content, and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.